Right, well, hi there again, and uh, welcome to Burton on Humber. The original plan was that the uh, the next video in the series would be um, the, the second one about the diorama and uh, my sort of gradual progression with it. Um, however, I realised uh, that the next thing I need to do on the diorama is uh, weather up the, the um, ballast and the track and so on. And uh, the original plan was that I would use that as an opportunity to um, practice a little bit with an airbrush. Um, so with that in mind, I, um, I grabbed uh, hold of a compressor about a month ago. Um, I have taken it out the uh, the box, um, but I haven't actually even turned it on or anything. I um, just took it out the box on the day and I uh, just made sure that it didn't look like it was damaged or anything. I uh, didn't get a chance to sort of plug it all in and then turn it on. Um, I was very, very busy with work. Um, we've got quite a big project on at the moment. So, yeah, so um, that said, yeah, this is uh, the box that it came in. Uh, the compressor itself is actually an AS186. It's made by KMS. It uh, has just the other, the one compressor and it comes with a tank and so on. Uh, also comes with um, a, a brush, in fact uh, two brushes and um, a, a hose and, and so on as well. Uh, so this is the other uh, box that it came in. Um, I've already just taken it out the, the box now. I took it out on the day and sort of put it back in there. Um, so that was the box. This is the compressor. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, bring it a little bit closer I guess. Hopefully I don't knock the camera doing that. Apologies if so. Yeah, so that's the other uh, compressor. Um, as I say, it's got the, the main compressor at the top here, just, just the one. Um, has a safety valve, has a tank. I uh, can't remember offhand um, how many litres that is. It might actually say here and um, doesn't look like it does. So, sorry, I'm not quite sure. Um, here it has the uh, dehumidifier. Uh, which is apparently uh, really good so that you don't get like a build up of water that then comes out the brush and spatters all the paintwork that you're doing. It uh, has a regulator on the, the top here so you can uh, set your, your pressure. I haven't taken the plastic off or anything on there yet. Um, and you can use this to um, adjust your, your, your pressure. So um, depending on what sort of size um, airbrush gun apparently you use, uh, what, how big the needle is, um, depends on how much pressure you want to put through it and also I guess what what sort of um, uh, technique you're trying to use and so on. Uh, so that, that's the other uh, compressor itself. As I say, um, it also came with um, a hose, so yeah, seems like a fairly good quality hose, nice sheath on it and so on. Um, that attaches just here on the compressor. Um, doesn't look like it's got a quick release or anything, but I probably won't be looking to swap brushes and so on very often. So I know um, that's apparently a problem for people if they use different brushes for different techniques, it's a bit of a pain. Um, however, it's probably not going to be the case for me. The compressor itself, I've had a look at a few reviews about it, and uh, people say that it's not great if you want to use a, an airbrush all day. Um, it's not really sort of um, a big enough tank and... Um, it, it, it's under strain too much, so it's going to kick in about every half hour um, or it's going to overheat every half hour, which is not good. However, for um, it is recommended for things like um, doing sort of models and so on where you just want to do a little bit of work for a while. You can turn it off for a while where you do some other stuff and then, you know, sort of leave it half an hour and work for another half hour on the compressor, which is pretty much sort of suits my needs. Um, it was pretty good. I mean, it was actually less than, than 80 quid uh, for the compressor. Uh, coming with with the hose and so on as well, and uh, also two brushes. Um, the brushes come in the the uh, the, the foam casing and so on. Uh, then themselves are in like um, plastic boxes. Now eventually I'll probably get myself a, a better brush, no doubt. Um, I'm thinking maybe just getting going up to an, an Awata Neo, which is probably a little bit better than this, but obviously you know not top of the range or anything by any means at all. So um, so it comes with this brush, uh, which uh, looks like it uses um, a, a siphon. Uh, through to a bottle and um, um, I guess a bottom feed. I'm not quite sure what you call that as opposed to the gravity feed one. Uh, so yeah, this is, oh actually I'll take it out I guess. So if I open it up, uh, yeah, there's the, your, your siphon bottle. Comes uh, with a little cup there. I'm not quite sure what that tool is, is for. I guess I'll read the, uh, the manual and uh, find that out. Comes with a, a little spanner for fixing things into the place and then it has the brush itself so if I bring that out yeah so there's the uh, the, the brush so it's um, a dual action uh, brush 
meaning that you can sort of run the air through it um, all of the time. Um, so you see, so you can't see the needle there, so there's actually a cap on it. Yeah, so you can sort of have the air running through it all the time, um, and then sort of uh, pull back on this to uh, let like, the, the paint come out as, as required and so on. So uh, apparently dual action is, is best when you're doing the modelling and so on. Uh, has a um, instruction in the, the bottom of the uh, box there. Um, talks about the, the mechanism, what all the parts are, um, how to maintain it, that sort of thing. So open it up there so you can see it's um, yeah what, what model it is, what the mechanism is, a list of all the parts there and then a diagram of all the, the parts matching up to that. So yeah, so that's uh, one of the, the brushes. Um, the one that I'll probably um, be more likely to use is uh, this one here. I think um, I like the look of the uh, gravity feed sort of uh, system more. So that's it there. So I'll open this one up. In fact, I'll just pause this for a moment uh, while I pack the other one away, um, sort of out the way. Okay, so that was the uh, the uh, siphon one, and this is the uh, the the gravity feed. So it's got a a little uh, cup here which has a, a cap on it which I'll try and attempt to take off. There we go, so you can um, yeah, put your, your paint and everything in there, put the cap back on so that um, I guess it doesn't spill if, you, if you're putting it down and so on. And maybe also not for drying out, although I gather you probably can't leave it for that, that long if it's in the cup. Uh, that's the, the brush itself, uh, again it's sort of um, dual action, there's the needle at the front and so on. So that's the brush and uh, where you attach it down the bottom, again it's got a, a little uh, spanner for fitting it and uh, has a um, eye dropper as well I guess for um, yeah, taking out a little bit of paint and uh, putting it into the cup. So that's what comes with the, uh, the, the gravity fee brush. Again it has um, the same sort of thing, it has in instructions about um, the, the model of the brush, um, the mechanism itself. A diagram of all the other uh, parts and um, a list of those um, uh, parts. So that's the other uh, the two brushes that come with it. As I say, that should um, give me the opportunity to um, have a play around with uh, the two different sorts of air brushes, see what I think, and maybe the siphon one is the one that will suit me. But um, I suspect it will probably be the gravity feed, um, simply because I want to do little bits at a time rather than sort of long things that are going to need the the, uh, the bottles and so on. Um, so the only other thing that uh, comes with that is um, an, an overall um, a set of man uh, like um, a manual there, so a set of instructions. I'll just uh, open that up. Okay, so yep, there's the uh, the in instructions. So airbrush compressor AS one eight six. The air tank's actually three liters. It says here uh, weighs uh, five point two kilo overall. Um, yes, it's quite easy to move around and you know, sort of can pop on the table. I do um, have heard that once it's been running for a long time, it will tend to uh, sort of start shaking around if it's uh, beginning to overheat and so on. Again, it's got a list of um, all the, the parts that are in the compressor, I guess for, um, for doing maintenance and so on. Um, I'll have a read through that uh, later on. So yeah, so that's uh, the compressor that I've bought. Um, I'll pause it there and I'll be... Okay, so I've um, attached the uh, the hose now, so that's uh, attached to here. Um, I've attached the other uh, hose at the other end uh, onto the gun. Um, it had a little fitting that was already on the on the uh, gun itself um, to design to, to go into the end of a, a hose. Um, obviously, I don't need that because the, the hose itself had a fitting, uh, so I've taken that one off and um, attached the hose. I've attached the uh, the cup on the side there, uh, so it just attaches on on this side. Um, I had a little bit of trouble trying to sort of screw it on using the, the, this ferrule here and um, found that if I actually sort of spun it round it seemed to uh, fit a lot better. Okay, so it's um, all, all attached. Um, the moment of truth, uh, let's see if it actually uh, runs. So I haven't run this before, I hope it does work because um, I probably can't send it back at this stage. Here goes, uh, hopefully this is not too noisy. Um, I apologise if it is. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that is um, reasonably uh, loud, um, but yeah, not, not too bad, I mean, I can, I can live with that. But I assume that the other uh, compressor will run for a while, and um, then once the, the tank fills up and it's reached its full pressure, 
then probably it will turn off for a while until we've used up the air in the tank and then it'll turn on and kick back in again. Uh, hopefully you can hear me uh, talking over the top of that. Okay, so let's see if uh, we get air out of the gun. So if I press down, there we go. So that seems to be working as intended. So I'm going to turn it, uh, press it down and then normally would uh, pull back uh, to release the, the paint. Okay, so that all seems to be uh, running as intended, which is good. I shall turn it off. Okay, so the, as I say, that's a little bit noisy, so I'll turn it off so you can uh, hear me a bit better there. Okay, if I lift up uh, the camera here and have a look, um, you'll see um, that it's on, at the moment, um, I can't quite see that, it's around about uh, on 50. Now, I believe that um, somewhere around about uh, 15 or 20 is um, probably best for um, a, a lot of the work. And as I say, you can use that uh, by adjusting um, the, this nozzle here. I'm sorry, not the nozzle, but I have this lever here. So you lift it up um, to turn it um, sort of up and down. There's um, an indicator on there with, the, with an arrow saying which one that does. Um, yes, yeah, so you lift that up, turn it on, and then lock it back into place, and then it can't be moved at that stage. Okay, so as well as the, uh, the compressor, I've also got myself uh, one of these um, cleaning pots uh, for your airbrush as well. Uh, there's a couple of these uh, sort of um, various models around. Um, this is the one that I, that I grabbed. Okay, so you've basically got the, uh, the pot itself and the idea is that um, you can take the, the gun and when you want to sort of um, clean all your paint and so on rather than sort of spraying that into the air I can put that into into here and you, you spray off all the, the residue and the remaining so on, particularly when you're sort of cleaning it and so on into the, uh, the pot. Um, just so that it's all contained within the pot rather than you know coming out into the air. Okay, so just before I finish up the video, um, you may have noticed when I was talking about the, the cleaning pot there, um, that in the background I've also got this box um, that's a spray booth. Um, I quite like the idea of uh, being able to do my airbrushing um, here in the, in the kitchen area where I do uh, some of my work. And uh, yeah, I thought a, a portable booth uh, would be useful. It sort of comes in a little briefcase setup uh, that folds out to, to the front area there. Uh, comes with a turntable so you can sort of spin your, your models round and so on whatever you're wanting to spray without having to, to touch it with your hands um, and then the, the fumes sort of get dragged out through those uh, the, through the blue filter and um, the white box on the left there uh, actually came with a sort of a long hose that attaches on the back of the, the booth and then you can sort of run that hose out of a window or through a door and so on uh, to take the fumes right outside. Uh, so I thought it was probably a, not a bad thing to, to get uh, for the setup so that when I'm doing the airbrushing I can do it inside um, if the weather's bad or, or whatever. So yeah, so I might even do a small video about the spray booth itself next time. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, hopefully I'll you know, get set up uh, with the compressor, with the spray booth, um, do a bit of practice uh, work um, with um, the, the airbrush and uh, see how I go. And then I can get back onto the diorama and uh, finally uh, weather that ballast and, and track the way I want to. So, okay, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you found it interesting. Um, maybe like it. Um, you know, maybe subscribe. Maybe not. Okay, bye for now.